have mercy, have mercy, have mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let's just go before the Lord and just ask, let him let, let, let him hear your voice and just how you are today. Say we have come again. We have come again. Father, we have come again. Holy Ghost, come and take control. Amen. We have come again. We have come again. Father, we have come again. Holy Ghost, come and take control. He said he dwell in in the praise of his, of his people. He is here already. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered, there will he be. We say, one will change a thousand, two, two will change ten thousand. Let, let's go before the Lord and just ask him, God, here we are today, Lord. Father, hear us and answer us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we have come before you, Lord. Father, Lord, we have cleansed us, you have died for our sin, Lord. Father, here we are, we ask that you please, Lord, oh, guide us in the, in the way that we will walk in. Father, Lord, Oh, please, we have, we have we have come again. Hear us and answer over the the, the, the turning issue that is that, 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 that is causing that, that is making us to stay in why that be stagnated in the place. We are here again. You know you are the only one. You are the only one, Lord. Every illness is Lord. Father, we are that to please, Lord. We are here because we have you die, you have risen, Lord. Father, everything that came with our Father, we are that to remove it. We have come again, Lord. Oh Lord, Father, please, Lord, hear us and answer us. We have Come again, Lord. Your daughter, your son, your 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 children are here again. The one you die for, the one that you die for, they are here again. Oh Lord, please hear us and answer us in Jesus' name. You are never put to shame, Lord. Don't let us be put to shame. Don't let them say, Oh, ah, this be they, 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 they go, they go to church every day, but they are still the same. Oh Lord, Father Lord, we are here again, Lord. Father Lord, we don't want to be to be in the same place, Lord. We are here again, we are here again. Father Lord, please let there be a dramatic turn around. We are here again, Lord. Father, hear all our answers, Lord. That sickness is, Lord, we don't want it again. We are here again, Father, hear us. Father, that's the situation we find ourselves. Oh, the poverty in our way, we are here again. Take it away. Every bad dream, we are here Take it away. We are here again, Lord. Oh, Lord, we are here again. Father, we are here again. We know we put our trust in you. You know you are never a failed God. We are here again. Hear us and answer us. In the mighty name, we are here again. Father, we are here again. Hear us and answer us in Jesus' name. Your children are here again. Your sons are here again. Your daughter are here again. The family of God are here again. The church of God that you purchase with your blood, they are here again. Hear us and answer us. Hear us in the name of Jesus. Father, we are here again. Hear us. Hear us. Hear us. Hear us. You know you are never a failed God. You you are never, there's nothing difficult for you. With you, all things are possible. We are here, we are here on our house. We have put our voices together. Oh, to come to you, we are here again. Father, hear us and answer us. Hear us and answer us today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we want to thank you again. We want to worship you and bless your name. Let's commit everything we'll be doing to the hands of God and last him to talk. Take charge of everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, take charge. Have your way today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, have your way. Have your way, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, we thank you and bless you. We give you praise. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, sorry, I'm hearing some feedback here. Hallelujah. Could, um, praise God. Thank God that uh, God doesn't change time. <laughs> he's, he's constant. He's reliable. He's dependable. Amen? Let's give God the praise that he is reliable. He's dependable. You can't just say, uh, rest your weight upon him and he will not crack. Uh, he will not uh, fail or fall back or change his times. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. This resurrection 
good morning. We just want to thank you for your son, Jesus. We pray that, Lord, you reveal more of him to us as we enter into your word, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to be looking at Open Heavens 31st of March, 2024, and the title is Consecration. Consecration. Yeah, consecration. And some of these big, big words. Um, you ask, what does it mean? You can ask, ah, what does this consecration mean? Anybody know? Emmanuel, what does consecration mean? No, no, no. Uh, I want the young person. What does it mean at the, at the back there? If somebody just met you, are you consecrated? Oh, you tell him. <laughs> yes. You know, sometimes we use some of these kind of big words and uh, it can actually lose some of our young people if we're not careful. Uh, okay, Auntie, you want to help us? You are saying it. Setting something uh, as apart for a holy purpose. Amen. And that's a very good start for us. Uh, the act in which a person or a thing is separated from secular or profane use and dedicated permanently to the sacred by prayers, rites, and ceremonies. Okay? That's a, a Britannica. Britannica definition. I'll read it out to us again. An act by which a person, a person, or a thing is separated from secular or profane use and dedicated permanently to the sacred by prayers, rites, and ceremonies. Amen? Yeah, so I think the word that helps me here is that permanently. That is, you're no longer temporarily doing things um, casually. You're set aside permanently for God. It's our prayer that as we go through this, we'll be set aside permanently for God in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So our anchor scripture is there. We're going to read it and then we'll proceed as God will help us. Amen. The memory verse there is Romans, sorry, 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Romans, uh, sorry, 2 Corinthians 6, 17. If you can open to it in your Bible, we'll also um, just flow along and read together in the King James. Are we there? Second Corinthians, and if it comes on the screen, that would be lovely. Second Corinthians 6, 17. Can we go? One, two, three, go. It says, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, clean thing, and I will receive you. Second Corinthians six seventeen. Let's do it two more times. Second Corinthians six seventeen. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Second Corinthians six seventeen. For the last time, one, two, three, go. Second Corinthians six seventeen. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Amen? Uh, we pray that he will um, set us apart permanently. Amen? Uh, in the name of Jesus. And we see that the a sort of process, a sort of step, some steps there. Firstly, there is a coming out from the general public. Okay? Um, coming out from every, you know, the run of the mill, okay? You know the cycle of life. People are born, they live, they study, acquire skills, have children, and then they die. That cycle is common to every person. So out of that cycle, you branch out, and God now takes possession of us. So we must first come out. 
And the first coming out is first not a physical one. You know, it's not, it's first spiritual. It's first just coming out of sin, coming out of uh, the sinful nature, the sinful life, the fleshly life, the carnal nature, and the nature of uh, the way that we were normally born into. It's actually unavoidable not to live that same cycle unless Christ comes. Amen? And this season of Easter, Christ came. Hallelujah. I thought somebody would be excited that Christ came. Christ came to deliver me and you from that burden of sin. You understand, you know? In fact, the way the burden of sin is operated, even if you are good, even if you didn't do nothing, you didn't do swear words, you didn't do any of this profane stuff, you are marked, you are, you are, you are living there, you are on death row. Eh? The Bible says, in sin was I conceived, in iniquity my mother birth, birth gave me birth. We're all sinners. Destined for eternity with in punishment and all that. And Christ came and said, see what? Pile all their sin on my head. I will die for them. I will die for him. I will die for her. Amen. You know, we went for, let's go out fishing. Please, next time they call this thing, don't wait. Come, attend. Amen? Ah, it was so beautiful. We saw the, the power and the beauty of the, of, of the body of Christ. In fact, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but so many groups. We got there. There were about six, seven groups. We had to be negotiating. Say, how long are you going to be here for? All right, uh, five, ten minutes. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you finish, I'll take over. As we were setting up, another group was coming and saying, how long are you going to be here for? Ah. So we say, oh yeah, we'll shut it. We, shot our, we just shut all our programs. After a while, we just collapsed what we did. We joined another group, and they were doing their service. We, we gave them our PA system, and they were preaching, they were sharing, you know, were singing along with them. Amen? Another one group was doing drama there. Another group came with the keyboard and was singing some really powerful praise worship. And it was lovely. Amen? We're just trusting God that we just a bit more cohesive so that we'll be more punchy and powerful. Amen? Preaching everywhere, left, right, and center. I, our, our prayer is that the Lord will just gather us together so we have more punch and have an impact in this nation in the name of Jesus. This land belongs to God. We refuse it to be taken over by the children of the bondwoman. We refuse it. So let's come out. Let's be there. There are people here... If you can't go out, because it's quite energetic, after a while you, your body feels it. There are people also here praying. Amen? You must have you, Aaron's and the hers on the knees praying while we are, others are in the battlefield. That's the body of Christ. Amen? It was beautiful to see. It must come out first in our hearts. And Jesus took us out. Amen? By a mighty deliverance. He said, I will pay for their price. So one of the preachers there actually said, he said, in fact, his son came, you know, and, and he was honest. He said, if somebody is, has a problem, I, I will not give my son to die for that person. Do you understand me? I said, he said, well, you can't do that. Let that person pay for his own price. I, I will not give my son to be paid for another person's price, another person's problem, another person's sin. And not that we were on his, we were not his friends, or we were enemies to him. We hated him. We were even saying, crucify him. You know, you can, you can just risk to give your life for somebody that is friendly, that you benefited on, that helped you, and you know, you can just say, oh yeah, I like you so much, I will die for you. But can you die for your enemy? I mean, can you? Nowadays, there are people who are praying enemies should be the one dying. Is that not so? Is that, they say fall down. Is that not the prayer nowadays? So Christ, Christ died for us. Why we are yet sinners? Christ died for the ungodly. Our, I don't think our head can ever carry it, but we just all we can do is just to say thank you. Amen? And both with our mouth, with our worship, with our praise and singing, our dancing, and with our life. Amen? And that life, that, that consecration is just the part of the thanking him. Amen? For rescuing us from that burden of sin. Amen? Uh, that's what it means, you know, that's the long and short of it. You just say thank you. We say thank you with our life. Praise God. 
And there he goes. The scripture to read there is Romans 12, 1 and 2. Amen. Romans 12, 1 and 2. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen? Two. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but ye, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen? Yes. Yes, God will help us to do that. Uh, consecration means being totally surrendered to God. In other words, holding on to him and him alone. Amen? Not him and something. Not Christ plus something. Just him alone. And honestly, dear brothers and sisters, Christ is sufficient. Amen? Amen? Uh, I think I think sometimes the problem we have is that we don't think he's truly sufficient enough. So we must add him with, uh, you know, some wisdom, some worldly wisdom, some cunningness, some craftiness, some dodgy stuff. Christ is sufficient. Amen. Uh, in fact, that is that is why sometimes the the prayer is. The, the prayer we can never graduate from is, Lord, help my unbelief. You know, it's when you don't trust something. You know, for instance, now, the chair you are sitting on, you know, if you don't trust it, you won't put all your weight on it. You will sit one kind that in case this thing falls, ah, I'll just get up. You're not putting your weight on it. You're sitting carefully with one leg, one here, and one leg there, you know, in case it breaks. Christ is sufficient. Now, maybe by the time we go into the service, we'll be saying that he's sufficient. Amen? I mean, come on. He came all the way from heaven. All the way from heaven where they don't, you know, there's no trouble there. There's no distress there. And as we saw, the thing we struggle for and we wear as our glory is <laughs> building material. Ah, heaven. We will get there in the name of Jesus. He wants, he actually wants us to be there. Amen? Uh, so consecration is being totally surrendered to him and him alone. Unfortunately, a lot of people hold on to Christ with one hand and hold on to the world with the other. Hold on to Christ fully and firmly. Do you know what? Even when it doesn't come through, even when it doesn't seem to have worked, uh, don't, don't deny him. Amen? Hold on to him fully. He, he never lets his people down. How do you explain Christians who claim to have given their all to Christ, but who still consult which doctors over challenging situations? Yeah? <sighs> and it happens. I mean, there's one of our elders. His father was a... Um, was one of those uh, oh, called Babalaos. That's what they call Babalaos. So he, he says they used to see the pastors in the local area. They used to come and collect power from his father. They'll bring money, they'll do the sacrifice and everything. So the, the pastors will be coming to come and collect power so that they can come and preach what? The gospel? It doesn't compute. Hold on to him. Amen. Whether you see nothing, you don't see anything. I know there's always that contradiction in terms where, you know, we think, you, you know, you must see, you know, a demonstration of power to show that Christ is there. Even diabolical people do power. I hope you know that. They do power. They do signs. They can do wonders. But they are calling, they are called what are called lying wonders, lying signs. And actually in these end times, there will be more of that. So don't be, don't be, don't be dissuaded by it. In fact, there's that. You know, maybe God gives space. I was going to talk about the deceptiveness of miracles. Do you understand me? You can see raw miracle here, but the Lord is not in it. I mean, uh, no, Prophet Elijah, isn't not the there was earthquake, there was thunder. There was, uh, there was a vibration and lightning or whatever. And the Lord was not inside it. 
So just be very, very careful. When you say, ah, something is happening over there, you rush there. Just want to collect your heart and take you away from the consecration that is in Christ Jesus. Amen? So if you don't even see the signs, don't, don't be, don't, that should not fret you at all. You know, it doesn't mean that the Lord, uh, you know, doesn't have something better. He does have something better. Just hold on to him. Truly consecrated Christians are ready to go all the way for God. Such people may go through a lot of suffering for the Lord, but they, are st they still count it all joy as long as God is with them. Amen. Amen. That's the true metal of a Christian. Even though we don't see our sign, we hold on. Amen. Uh, James 1, 2 is the scripture reference there. It says, and God, uh, a good example of a genuinely consecrated person was Apostle Paul. He was totally sold out to God, such that even when God warned him about being apprehended in Jerusalem, he still went there to preach the gospel. In Acts 21, uh, 11 to 14, you see a prophet Agabus saying, this is the person that, you know, he removed his belt and tied it on Paul and said, the person who, that I tied this thing on, they, they, they are going to bind him and all that. Paul he said, I'm going there. I'm going to preach the gospel. He didn't run away from it. Amen? And the Lord will help us. There will be times like that, you know, even when we, was going, when we went there, he saying, ah, this person is saying this thing. They will come. You know, some of the things people are saying and preaching, you can easily just catch them and arrest them and say, oh, you are, you are, gender, you are gender critical. You understand? Yeah, you are homophobic, you are Islamophobic, and all those kind of phobias. The time is coming, but brethren, regardless of it, just hold on to him. Amen? Uh, Paul said, our daddy is saying, he was so consecrated that he declared in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Consecrated people care about God more than anyone or anything else. I was watching an interview on Dove Television one day. This is Daddy Gio speaking. And the guest said that in the past, all Christians cared about was for God to use them. But nowadays, people are more interested in how they can use God. Get me this. Get me that. Get me husband. Get me wife. Make sure she's fat, fair, and fertile. Get me visa. Get me CSO. See what you know. He's not. He's not. He's not. He is God, not DOG. You know when you you know when the people carry their dog, they throw stick. They say fetch. He's God. It's not, it's not D-O-G. The Lord will help us. He will help me too in the mighty name of Jesus. Many Christians, many people just use Christianity as a cover to look good in the society, but when a little test comes, they denounce Christ. For example, these days, many Christians compromise their faith to get married. They wear revealing outfits to attract men, attend ungodly gatherings with the hope of finding suitors, and worse still, engage in premarital sex. I hope no young person is involved in that kind of thing here. Your bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh will come in the name of Jesus. Stay close to Christ. I mean, there are, there are some real correct men there, real correct women there, and they will find you and locate you just be burning and be on fire for him in the name of Jesus. A missionary's inspiring story greatly impacted my decision to be consecrated to God. She was serving in an era that was hostile to Christianity. On her wedding day, while she was getting ready, the authorities raided her home and arrested her for preaching the gospel. Instead of crying, she smiled, kissed the handcuffs and said, Lord, I didn't know I was so special to you that you didn't want me to share, to share me with anyone else. How beautiful is your wedding ring to me? She was so sold out to God that while others saw a disaster, she saw the handcuffs as Christ, as God's wedding ring to her as his bride. Beloved, are you consecrated to Jesus? Are you willing to go through sufferings for the sake of Christ? I remember our... our Remember our theme for the year, First Peter 5.10. After you have suffered a while. 
I know some of us want the suffering to be the briefest possible. But we need to go through this to be consecrated. Let's pray. Father Lord, help me. Are you willing to go through sufferings for the sake of Christ? Just pray, Lord, just help me. You know, it's not something you do by your own self. He will come and he will stand by you. He will help you. He will help you. That's the guarantee we have of the Holy Spirit. He's our strength by, he's our succor, he's our helper, he's our, he's our advocate. Huh? So let's, let us rely on him, not our own strength, our ability. Lord Jesus, help us to be totally, totally sold out to you. We give you praise for today's service. Reveal more of Christ's birth, death, crucifixion, and resurrection in today's service, O oh God. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please shall we rise as we honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who bore our sins, who bore our shame, our pain, our sorrow, who went all the way to Calvary. He died for us, he was buried, and he rose. And now he's seated at the right hand of God, interceding for us. Can we just bless the name of the Lord this morning? Let's just appreciate the Father. Come on, appreciate your Father, your Savior. Come on, speak something wonderful unto the Father. Just appreciate Jesus for all that he did on the cross of Calvary. If not for him, we won't be gathered together here. And I would just like us to read this um, verse this Bible verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55, um, chapter 15, verse 55 to 57. Please, if we can project that so we can read together. Okay, yes, if we read together. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can we just bless the Lord? Let's give thanks to our God. Jesus is our victory. Yours is the victory. He's our living hope. Come on, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Don't be silent. What is your response to that which he did on the cross? worship the Lord. Give him the glory. To him be all the honor, all the glory, all the adoration. It's unto him we have gathered this morning. It's because of what he did that we're able to stand before his presence, to come to him. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We just give you glory, Father. We acknowledge you. We honor you this morning.
Celebrate and rejoice for indeed we have won the victory on our behalf.
my wonders run. of our king he made our salvation to be complete by, by by the reason of resurrection let's begin to thank god this morning thank god for the salvation of your soul give him praise give him praise this morning thank you lord for saving me oh thank you for taking me from the merry clay thank you jesus thank you lord 
blood. Father, we appreciate you this morning. Oh, thank you for your blood. Thank you for choosing us, oh God. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for separating us. We are grateful this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Can we have in Christ alone on the screen? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In him alone. Yes, Lord. In Christ alone. In Christ alone. Christ alone. Yes, in him alone. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. I want us to take that in as a prayer this morning. Begin to pray. Begin to reflect. Reflect on your salvation. Begin to pray this morning. Begin to reflect. Reflect on what the cross, the cross did for you. Begin to reflect on that hymn this morning. Begin to reflect on that song. Pray. I want you to pray. Just I want to, I want them to bring the third and the fourth lyric. Just for them to show it. Not for us to sing. But just begin to reflect on, on that song. Yes, he did all for us. No scheme of man. Yes. We ever take us away from him. Begin to reflect on that song and begin to pray this morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we dedicate your life to him this morning. Give him that assurance. Tell the Lord, Lord, I will dedicate my life to you this morning. Oh, I renew my commitment to you, oh God. Nothing will take me away from you, oh Lord. No pain, no sickness. Yes, Lord, I'm forever yours in the name of Jesus. Oh, begin to declare to him this morning. Nothing will take you away from him. You are my comforter. Yes, no scheme of men. No pain, no sorrow will take me away from you. Oh, till I take my last breath, oh God, I will serve you, Jesus. Till I take my last breath, oh God, I will serve you, Jesus. I commit my life again this morning to you. I will dedicate my life to you this morning. I renew that vow again with you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Pardon my voice this morning. Yes, it is well. Can they show us Matthew 28? Let's read Matthew 28. Matthew 28 is a very popular scripture. Matthew 28. I just won't be able to read all. Let's just read, take from 5 to 8. Matthew 28, is it there? Thank you. And the angel answer, sorry, can we have from one? Let's read from one, yes, from one. In the end of the supper, as it began to, I would like new living, sorry, new living. Let me read from my Bible. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was drawing, as the new day was drawing, Mary Magdalene and, and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. There was a great earthquake. For, for an angel of the Lord, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rode aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guy shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead, dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman, don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here, he is risen for the dead, just as for, he's risen from the dead, just as he said will happen. Come, see where his body was lying. Verse 7, and now go quickly and tell the disciple that he has risen from dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him, you will see him there. Remember what I have told you. Verse 8, the women ran quickly from the tomb. 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 They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciple the angel's message. Amen. You know, when I was studying this, I was just like, you know, like this morning we have all come to, jo to church. It's an Easter Sunday, we are happy. But you know, as we are happy, they are still, you know, we are carrying that fear. You know, Mary Magdalene, I was, I was asking my husband in the car, I say, but well, I don't know why these women were afraid because they, were, they should be happy now. It's a resurrection morning. They've seen Jesus. They've seen their, the, the lover of their soul. 
What were they fighting? But you know, they were fighting. Maybe they were fighting for, there might be so many reasons the way they were fighting. It might be because they were just surprised that the one that they have been talking to, eating to. So this man I, is actually reason. You know, so I don't know what you're afraid of this morning. You know, we are happily dressed, we are smiling, but there's something, there's pain, there's still a pain, you know, there's still sorrow, there's still something that you are complaining about. I want you to tell it to Jesus this morning. Is it the restoration morning? Believe, believe. You know, he said he wrote, the the angel, the angel of the Lord roll away the stone and he sat upon the stone. I don't know, I don't know the problem that you are still carrying on this morning, on this resurrection morning. I want you to commit it into the hands of God. Don't go home with that problem this morning. It might be sickness in your body. It might be lack. It might be addiction. I want you to commit it into the hands of God this morning. Oh, don't go home with that problem. You know, they saw Jesus. They saw, you know, he said them that he is risen. But as they were going, they were still frightened they were anxious. Oh, you might have anxiety in your mind this morning. Commit it into the hands of God. To the hands of God. The Lord is able. He is more than able. The song says he's our comforter. He's our all in all. He's our all in all. There is nothing he cannot do. Is it your immigration status? The Lord can do it. I've been in that situation before and the Lord did it. Oh, there is nothing he cannot do. He can, you know, every limitation, God can take it away. He can do more than even what we think that he can do. Oh, my soul, Father, we know it is a day of joy, but there is still something that we cannot share with people. Oh, there is still that pain. There is still that child that is not safe that we are still praying for. Oh, there is still, there are so many bills to be paid. Though we are happy coming to church, but God, this morning, we lift it on your, your feet, oh God, and we believe that yes, because it is the resurrection you will help us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, towards the last verse, he gave them a final charge in 16, and, in 16 to 19. Let me read. Sorry, I didn't bring my glasses there, but I can read that. He said... I think 18. Jesus, okay, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach this new disciple to obey all the command I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That is the final charge that the Lord is giving us. Thank God that we went on evangelism yesterday, but I want us to pray. Like we pray, you know, we need the body to go for evangelism. Him. I need this voice to be able to tell somebody about Jesus. So the voice must not be weak. That is why we are praying that all the situations, circumstances of our life, we not hold up bound because we need we need the body to go and preach. So the final charge, I want us to pray this morning that God strengthen me, enable me to go there to preach your word. Let me not keep silent. Oh, that is the final charge that you have given us. We need to go and spread the gospel. He said, go tell it all around that Jesus Jesus Christ is Lord. Begin to pray this morning. Ask God for strength. Ask God for strength. Ask God for strength to go to your neighbor, to tell it to your family, to tell it to everyone, to your colleague that Jesus Christ is Lord. Ask God for wisdom. Father, we are asking you for wisdom. We want to go and obey your commandment. It is a charge that you have given us. You say, go. Go make other disciples. God, give us the power. Give us the strength. Oh, give us the wisdom to preach this word to bring many disciples to your throne in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Father Lord we just thank you. Yes this morning is the resurrection morning. The morning that you rose again, oh, it was joy. It was joy on that day. That completed our salvation. You're, you came, you died, and you rose again. Father, we are so grateful. Thank you for our salvation. We say thank you, Jesus. And we remember the backsliding Christian this morning. Oh, we pray for them. As many that have gone back to the world, as many prodigal sons that have been lost, oh, Lord, this morning, we call them back in the name of Jesus. We call them back in the name of Jesus because he said he has come that all that he, all that he has come from no one will be taken away from
for me. We say, Lord, we call them back in the name of Jesus. And we pray for ourselves, oh God. We pray for strength. We pray for we pray for our needs, oh God. We pray for everything that we need. Oh, we need this body to go forth to preach. Father, we say sickness will not hold us bound. Lack will not hold us bound in the name of Jesus. Nothing will hold us bound. Addiction will not hold us bound. Sickness will not hold us bound in the name of Jesus. We will go and tell it that yes, you have risen again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.
and so shall it be in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity you've given to us this morning. What a wonderful day to be alive. Thank you, Lord, for rising up for us. We are eternally grateful. We will never be able to thank you enough. And so, Daddy, on this Easter Sunday morning, we come before you saying thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you again. Thank you for the salvation of our souls. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for covering our shame. Thank you for changing, O oh God, our mourning into dancing. We return all the glory to you in Jesus' precious name. Daddy, please, even as we go into Sunday school classes this morning, we ask that you prepare our hearts for your word. Prepare your word for our hearts in Jesus' name. Don't let any one of us remain the same again in the name of Jesus. We are pleading in the children's Sunday school, teenagers Sunday school, adults Sunday school. Father, even as we have sung this morning, take us deeper and deeper, even into the very character of Christ in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we say thank you. Please accept our thanks. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. Tell your neighbor, welcome to church. Tell them, good to see you. Tell them, is today your happiest day ever? <laughs> okay, someone says, I heard happy Easter. All right, say happy Easter then. Oh, <laughs> praise the Lord. All right, let's uh, make our children feel welcome as they go to their classes. They will be back soon. They have quite a number of ministrations today. Clap for them as they go to their classes. <laughs> children, teenagers, hallelujah. Thank God for their teachers. Thank God for their parents as well. Amen. All right, we are going to have uh, a summarized Sunday school class this morning. Praise God. You know, today is not, it is not an ordinary service. What, is, what makes today's service different? What makes today's service different? He is what? He is risen. He is alive. He is alive. Hallelujah. Death has lost its thing. The curse of sin is broken. He is alive. Let's clap for the choir. Thank God for their lives. Hallelujah. All right. This morning, we're looking at Kingdom Influencers. Please, uh, workers in training, if you are, you know, in the workers in training class, you want to go upstairs, uh, Pastor Ty is waiting, uh, sorry, <laughs> Pastor Inka is waiting for you upstairs, praise the Lord. Please, uh, those of us who are attending workers in training, I can see the class is already up there. All right, Kingdom Influencers, let's go quickly to Luke chapter 23. We're looking at Luke chapter 23, 49 to 53. Luke 23, verse 49 to 53 is our text. Luke chapter 23, verse 49 to 53. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had consented to the counsel and deed of them. And he was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. May God bless the reading of his word to our hearts in Jesus' name. I always like to retreat that Sunday school is when we have the opportunity to ask questions and we ask ourselves questions as well. Uh, that's our text for this morning. Our memory verse is Luke chapter 8 verse 3. Luke chapter 8 verse 3. Let's do it together. One, two, go. Luke chapter 8 verse 3. And Joanna, the wife of Shusa, Herod, Seward, and Susanna and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. Luke chapter 8 verse 3. Can we do it again? Luke chapter 8 verse 3. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Seward, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. Luke chapter 8 verse 3. All right, who will do it for us very quickly? Yes. Sister Book is ready, please. Thank you. Let's clap for her. Let's ah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. Luke chapter 8, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the Herod stewards, mm -hmm. and Susanna, and many others, which minister unto him of their substance. Luke 8, verse 3. Come on. 
praise the Lord. Alleluia. Thank you very much. That's our memory verse this morning, and we're looking at kingdom influencers. We have two outlines. We'll be looking at attributes of kingdom influencers, and then we'll consider becoming a kingdom influencer. Praise the Lord. Amen. What is an influence? When we, when we say someone is under the influence, what do we mean? <laughs> oh, see, maybe that's not appropriate for this class. <laughs> okay. What is influence? Yes, sir. Dickin Kennedy. Uh, when you say somebody is under the influence, it means that somebody is being controlled by something. Something is controlling another person. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, when we say a person of influence, what do we mean? Yes, when we say, when we, what, who is a person of influence? Please, if you need a Sunday school manual, if you don't have the Sunday, I mean, we can, you can go online and download, but if you need a copy of this, put up your hand and the ushers will help you with a copy. We have one hand up, okay, to have effect on you, yes, a person of influence is someone who has effect on you, okay. To have dominion. Someone who has dominion, okay, okay. Someone who can inspire other people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at the outline. Let's quickly go straight into the outline. We will have a quick class this morning because of um, all the ministrations we have. All right, an influencer is a person that has the capacity to have an effect on the character, on the growth or behavior of someone or something. Is that true? Yes, sir. How many of us know influencers? Just give, shoot some names up. Ah. Okay, I didn't, okay. J Jesus, okay. We all know Jesus is an influencer. That's why we are here. Abi, did he not influence us all to be here? Yes. All right, okay. Don't, put, don't include Jesus. Don't include Satan. <laughs> Who is an influencer? Give us some examples. Somebody said the Holy Spirit. One yes. Spirit. Huh? Someone said the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Physical, physical. Parent, okay. Parent, yes. Pastor Tai. Pastor Tai is an influencer, Pastor okay. Inca. Pastor Inca is an influencer. Pastor Febi, Pastor, Pastor, Tuaye, Pastor George. <laughs> Leave those people inside Hallelujah. your church. <laughs> Who is an that is you, yes, thank you. Yes, examples. Miles Monroe, okay. Your husband, uh -huh. Joshua Selman, okay, yes. Yes. Me. I heard, okay, Mommy Tina is an influencer. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Any more influencers? Our parents, yes, Mommy Tina said so, yes. Okay. Yes, Dr. Va. They are negative influencers. We are not studying them. <laughs> yes. So we have to balance it. Okay. Um, there is the world of social media. So okay. our children are getting drawn in. Okay. So it's not just the positive. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, Bob Risky. Let's leave all those people. Let's leave <laughs> let's leave those people, please. <laughs> Before when we start going to Bob Risky, let's <laughs> please. All right. Kingdom influencers. <laughs> We're saying here that there are believers who impact the world through their ministries, through their in the marketplaces. They share their faith, they share their substance and they share their expertise. They help make all of that to enlarge the kingdom of God. Praise God. That means we're saying that kingdom influencers are relevant where? In the church, but also relevant in the marketplace. Hallelujah. Amen. God needs, our outline says, God needs his children to be kingdom influencers who will take over the spheres of influence here on earth for the excellent execution of his agenda. So how many influencers do you know in your workplace how many kingdom influencers do we have in our workplaces do you know someone in your workplace who is a kingdom influencer okay just, okay let me not say your workplace how many kingdom influencers can we just quickly name don't worry we've named that did you and pastor tayo don't name them uh, okay people that are in industry in the marketplace but are also work towards also work towards expanding god's kingdom Dr. Femi. Fe okay, Dr. Femi Daramola. I leave all those ministers inside you. Uh, Dr. Femi Daramola, yes, in his industry and also in church. Okay, yes. 
Dr. Mrs. Awoshika. Everybody saying yes, yes. Okay, yes. Dr. Mrs. Awoshika. Do we know her? Okay, okay. Huh? Okay. Pastor Jumoke. Mrs. Alakija. Okay, anyway, sorry. Let's. <laughs> I think before. Uh, Pastor Etinde, okay. Pastor Etinde, thank you. <laughs> the question is Are you willing to partner with God in, on this mission? So it's a very simple class. The class is Kingdom Influencers. God needs people to be able to expand his, his kingdom, but they are relevant in industry. They are relevant in nursing. They are relevant in healthcare. They are relevant in commerce. They are relevant in finance. They are relevant in technology. Are we willing to partner with him? What do we see in Luke chapter 23, 49? What do we see in Luke 23, 49? What comes to mind very quickly? You know, we do text review. We, we've got to run. 49 to 53 says, all his acquaintance, the women that followed him from Galilee, stood afar off, beholding these things. There was a man named Joseph, a counselor. He was a good man and a just. Same heart consented to the counsel and deed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. These went on to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And he took it down, wrapped it in linen, and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone where never a man was laid. What can we see from the text? Kingdom influencers. Anyone? Joseph of Arimathea. Yes, we can see him. What did he do? What about his life can we learn or align with? He was bold. Okay, thank you, Ma. Yes. Mary Magdalene. Okay, ma. Uh, 49. Okay, Mary Magdalene is not here. Okay. Okay. There was a man named Joseph, a counselor, a good man. Just, yes. Any more? What can we pick from that text? How many of us, yes, what else can we learn? One more thing and then we quickly. Ma? He understood. He did not hold back. He understood the season. Yes, I was hearing someone. He used his money. Okay, thank you, ma. Now, how many of us, yes, sir? He used his influence to change, to, to influence decision. He used his influence to determine, okay, I will take the body. Now the question is this, is your hand. He was a good man, yes. So that means that the people that were speaking to him mm. know that this man can do anything he wants to do, so they believe in him. Hallelujah, he was a good and a just man. So he knew, so the people, Pilate knew, okay, this one cannot go into error, he, can, he cannot deceive us. Now let us come back home. The essence of this is, how many of us think that working within government, within politics, within where policies or decisions are made is, uh, is not for the believer? You know, you feel like, okay, the higher you climb, the more you have to, you know, the more the danger. So you don't want to climb up the ladder. You just want to stay where you are because if you go up higher, you know, you feel no, those people that are that high. Um, uh, they are sinners. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. For us to be kingdom influencers, let's just, let's just go ahead. He says he was a just man. You know, he came to, he had influence, he had presence. He was able to make access into the presence of Pilate. It's not everybody that can go into the presence of Pilate. How many of us know someone that can get us to Rishi Sunak? All hands are down. Okay, <laughs> okay, uh -huh. at least we have one hand. So please, if you want to see Rishushina, come and see me. Then I'll tell you the sister whose hand was up, and then she will tell you the person that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of us know how to get to King, the King? Uh -huh. Okay, uh, three hands. See, we are connected in this church. There are three hands already. <laughs> Praise God. So if you want to see the King, come and meet me. I'll, t <laughs> I'll charge you my fee. Then I'll tell you the person who will show you who. You can see that will take you to who you can see that will make you to see the king. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's come back. We're saying here that Pilate had access. He had influence. He was able to stand in the presence. Sorry, um, Joseph of Arimathea was able to stand in the presence of, of Pilate to make a request. And it was granted. 
So what are some of the characteristics, the attributes of a kingdom influencer? Now, social media influencers, what is their characteristic? They have, uh, okay, I heard fashion. Fashion, they have large following. Yeah. Uh, sir? Followers and lie. <laughs> they lie. Okay. Uh, their followers are large. They do something. They demonstrate power of the voice. Okay. Now, what do we need for a kingdom influencer? Number one, they contribute significantly to the economy of the kingdom and the social well-being of their societies. They contribute to their chosen careers. A kingdom influencer is, is a believer, but in his career, he also stands out. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's number one. We'll read some of these scriptures. I'm just looking at our time. Number two, they are full of good works. They positively showcase the grace of God to the people around them. I met someone, you know, when we were working. One of my first jobs. See, I said to her, when I found out she's a believer, I said to her, pray for me. She said, no, I won't pray for you. Why? Because to her, it's against, maybe against the policy of the organization. But after work, she's the one that took me to night vigil, the first night vigil I attended in this country. Praise the name of the Lord. They show good works. They positively showcase the grace of God in the workplace, in the community, in the society, in the church. That's why Pastor Inka said, the man Joseph of Arimathea was a good and a just man. He did not cheat. He did not have double life. Amen. When he turned up to work, he had turned up to work. And he worked his full hours. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, number three. These people, kingdom influencers, have good mastery of their respective industries. Praise the Lord. They have a good mastery of their respective industries. And therefore, there is a combination of faith and competence to influence happenings around them. A kingdom influencer is that person that you go to. Praise the Lord. Let me just check something. If you, if you have a question about medicine, about health, who do you call? Pastor? Pastor? Pastor Daramola and? Pastor Valerie. Pastor Valerie. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> See the way she looked at them. <laughs> okay. If you have something about nursing, if you need someone, you know, the nurse space, who do you call? Auntie Nike, Auntie uh, Tokwe. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, Sister, Sister Joyce. Ah, oh, Sister Joyce is true. Yes, Sister. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Now, if you are worried that if you want mortgage, finance, insurance, who will you call? Pastor Inka. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, what are we saying? We're saying that in your specific area. You have become a go-to person. Even within the organization, even within the firm. If they want to make a particular decision, they call you, they say, this thing that we want to do, do you think it will work? When you have reached that stage, by God's grace, you have become an influencer in that organization. Praise the name of the Lord. So you have a good, a good mastery of your respective industry. You use a combination of faith and competence. Faith and competence. Faith and competence. I told my children once, you know, my children in teenagers class. I said, you are going to fly a plane. And they said to you, uh, we had a little child there, uh, Eberichi. They said to you, you know, you have entered the plane, you're about to go, and they say, Eberichi has just been anointed. They've just poured holy olive anointing oil on him, one full bottle. He's the pilot for the day. Please, strap your seat belts, and we are going. And you know that Eberichi is the five-year-old that is... <laughs> You will drop faith aside and say that boy is not competent to fly this plane. Praise God. Hallelujah. So what are we saying? Faith and competence. All right. Number four. They are professionals who strategically promote Jesus along with their trade and give credit to him for their in achievements in life. They position themselves, whatever they achieve, they say it's God's grace. It's God that has helped me thus far. It is the mercy of God. It is the mercy of God, Pastor, uh, Pastor Busala in Jesus' name. Sister Busala Daramola said in the class that, you know, when her team comes in, she says to them, how are you, spirit, soul, and body? How are you, spirit, soul? And they say, body, leave the spirit and the soul alone. 
<laughs> but that way she's able, and after a while, you know, they become inquisitive. She's able to say, okay, look, uh, you need to think about the soul, about the, about the spirit as well. Now that and then, you know, that helps her to have conversations about the, you know, the gospel outside of workplace. Praise the name of the Lord. So strategically, you will promote Christ even in your place of work. Number five, they have specialist knowledge and authority in a specific subject. And as such, there are irresistible forces in their domain. Yes, ma, please. Sister Joyce. Number five, specialist knowledge. Yes. Okay. They have, sp yes, ma. Judges 4, mm. give example of Deborah. Yes, ma. Who was a prophetess and the Israelites went to her. Mm -hmm. And then she was, she judged, you know, um, their problems. Mm -hmm. uh, bringing it back home as a mother, mm. how do you, who is also an influencer, how yes. do you balance this thing so that your children won't say, oh, mom is controlling you have okay. to do this. Uh -huh. Trying to give them a right. Okay. God bless you, ma. Uh, aunties, uh, 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 sister is saying, <laughs> uh, I go answer. They say, Pastor Ty is not here. You hear here today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't worry, Pastor Inka is here. Just bounce it off. Praise God. She's asking, she said, how do you be, how are you an effective influencer as a mother, for example, to the extent that, you know, so that your children don't end up saying that you are controlling you understand? How do you balance it? That, yes, you are influencing them in the right direction because there's a way it could get, they begin to see you as a controlling person and they just obey you for the period they are, ch they are children. When they become adults, they say, uh, now I'm an adult. Praise the name of the Lord. So who has done it successfully or, or how do you do it? See, that question is from mother to mothers. As you see, I'm not a mother. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. All right. <laughs> Mommy Tina. I think uh, my children do the same thing to me. But when they grow up, they told me straight that I was forcing them to go to church. Mm. It's not the... Uh, they don't want. Um, they don't want. Okay. But I was forcing them. Okay. But forcing them, they come back and tell me, Mommy, you plant good plant in our life. Mm. You know, they will say it, mm. but continue to mm. do not too much ash. The way we don't do be too it. okay, don't be too harsh, uh -huh. okay, but just but keep at it. Uh -huh. So sit down, and they will come back and tell you that what, what you put into their life mm. is benefit them when they. What well, in the future they will tell you? Yes, sis, they will tell you that what you did was the right thing. Yes, ma. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, thank God for this question because it's something that we really need to seriously, you know, look into, um, like um. Um, Mommy Tina said, not too harsh because be that will harsh. miscontrol love. Mm. You know, those tough love does not really speak love as such. Okay. But another thing is not to influence them out of fear because you are afraid that, oh, they're going to do this, you know, because okay. most of the time we deal with them because we're afraid of, you know, what what if, what if, like Job was always afraid for his children. Okay. So we have to be very careful when we are influencing them not to do it out of fear, mm. to be level-headed when we are doing it. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't influence them out of fear. Influence them through the word of God. Let the word of God be the standard. Let the word of God be, you know, the yardstick. If you are like, you know, uh, one of my sisters told me last Sunday, she said when she speaks to her daughter, she says, look, this is what the Bible says. You know, take them to the word of God. Long after you've gone, they will still read the word of God and see that it's the same thing that mommy said. It has not changed. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Sis. Okay, let's, let's crack on. Number six, uh, they deliberately publicize Christ anywhere. They deliberately, any opportunity they get, they actually publicize Christ. So we're just saying here, general attributes of a kingdom influencer, the person is skilled in his domain. He's a go-to person. He does not hide the grace of God on his life. And when he gets the opportunity, he tells you about Christ. He's influencing. He, in his domain, you go to him. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the things of God, he's uh, trying to expand the kingdom of God in whatever way possible. How do I become a kingdom influencer? How do I become a kingdom influencer? Let's just stay here. How do I become a kingdom influencer? Or how many of us are kingdom influencers? Hello? Uh-uh. Okay, how many of us are kingdom influencers by God's grace? 
<laughs> All right. Okay, so how do I become a kingdom influencer? Lifestyle. Be ready. Ahead, be ready. Yes? Always be ready for the work. For the work. There is work. Okay, be ready for the work. Yes? Be obedient. Yes? Don't be seasonal. Don't be seasonal. Okay, Sister Yomi says we should give her Sister Tokwe. Okay, don't be seasonal. Don't be seasonal. Yes, how? Yes, sister, for me. Sir? Do good work. Do good work. Fill the template, fill the forms properly. Send the emails on time. When you say I'm going to send the email, send it. When you send it, when you want to send it, check the typo. Check it. Do you understand? Do, do the kind of work that cannot be easily improved upon. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's look at what we have in our outline. Number one, we're saying you must be born again. No matter how excellent your work may be, you can be a social media influencer. You can be a political party influencer. You can be any kind of influencer. If you are not born again, you are not a kingdom influencer. So you must be what? You must be born again. Be sure of the salvation of your soul. That you have really, really given your life to Christ. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. Anybody there? Romans 10 9. We, we all know that scripture. Romans 10 9. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be what? You shall be saved. You must be born again. Number two, be ready always to share the good news about Christ. Be ready always, every opportunity. You have that coffee, you have that drink, you have that chat, you know, together. Be ready always to share the good news. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, our outline says he's the master strategist. He will help you appropriately. Amen. Whatever industry you are in, the master strategies will help you. Then I like the fact that the fourth, the, sorry, the fourth point, you know, you cannot, <laughs> it says we should have a friendly and an accommodating disposition. You know, there are believers in workplaces that you can't approach. True? <laughs> there are believers in workplaces that you can't approach. You, you know, the person is a believer, but even the unbelievers fear him or her. You cannot, you know, without a friendly disposition, you cannot actually draw people to influence them. And I think that's one of the things that Sister uh, Dele and Momitina were highlighting there. Even with our children, they, after you have disciplined or after you have cautioned them or told, they need to still be able to run back to you because you have a friendly disposition because there's no other better mommy they can go to. Hallelujah. Amen. So you must have a friendly disposition. You must be able to accommodate people. And as Sister Nika said, we must be ready to work hard. We must be ready to work hard. We must be ready to work smart. We must be ready to be tenacious. What does that mean for young people, for elders, for each and every one of us? It means upskill yourself. It means I need to upskill myself. I need to get extra certification. <laughs> I know that, um, I, let me not even talk about certification, but in that do domain, in that industry, be the go-to person. If a new technology has come, don't be left behind. You know, AI has come out. If you're in technology, make sure you plug, at least have an idea, have a conversational idea that you can talk about. If it's in nursing, if there's a new research, go into it, throw yourself at it. It, you know, it requires hard work. Then we're saying here, you need to establish a strong voice in your position. We remember the man Daniel. They always had to go to him. If there was any issue about wisdom, about the interpretation of dreams, Daniel was the go-to person. And when he tells you, it is correct. In fact, he will tell you, let me pray. I'll go and think, think about it. And then when he comes back, he says, the God of heaven revealed this to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Then you've got to be a game changer in your sphere of domain. A game changer, basically, when you, are, when you get involved, things will pan out differently. You'll be able to have looked at the risk. You'll have been able to look at, you know, to assess, is this going to be profitable? Will this work? Then, of course, please, I like the last point, because that's where many times we miss it. We have to have an accountability mindset. The challenge with many kingdom influencers is uh, 
we forget that one day we will stand before him to give an account. The Lord Jesus in Luke 19, you know, if we, if we look at that Luke 19, as we try and bring this to a close, Luke chapter 19, you read it for me, Luke 19, 16 and 17, we must have an accountability mindset. Then came the first saying, Lord, your pound has gained 10 pounds. And he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because you have been faithful in very little, have thou authority over 10 cities. You have been placed, remember, how many of us remember what, um, what they told Esther? You have been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. In that office, in that career, in that chosen endeavor, there is something that the Lord expects of you there. It's not an accident. And guess what? If we have an accountability mindset, we'll know that one day we'll be able to say, we will have to stand before him. What did you do with that nursery that I gave to you? What did you do in that school that I sent you to? How, what did you do in that hospital? Do you know how many, how many colleagues I brought your way that I expected you? Not with the gospel. Someone says, preach the gospel if necessary, use words. That means with your lifestyle, we are able to reach out to many. Praise the Lord. Amen. Have the mindset that you are accountable. The Lord will help us in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Every, okay, sorry, Mommy Tina has a question. And Sister Fumi as well, okay. Professional, diplomatic, uh, okay. uh, those who have big, big jobs, big, big, big influence. Job. But Dockers. Dockers. Dockers have uh, influence. Talent. Mm. And he used it. She used her talent, yes, ma'am. To influence people in the community. Mm. Is it only for those who have no, no. professional jobs? No, 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 uh -huh. no, 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 no. Because okay. to explain it, and okay. let's see that I'm a farmer, so that I can use my farmer. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Praise God. <laughs> if you, if you, if you ask, ma, is is the truth? How many of us have influence outside of any? Yes. Okay, brother. Yeah, I think I, I remember I, in those days when I was working um, at the BBC and mm. um, uh, and I was doing security, you know, I, I stand with, with other guys, but there's this guy that is an unbeliever, he doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe, and nobody could work with this guy. Uh, and it was very specific that I say, no, forget I it. Don't want to but what you. I did, I, and through my lifestyle, that's why I, in regards to influencing people, and uh, with this, with time, I, I, this guy started to talk to me about, said, can I know more about Christ? Can I know more? Mm. Um, and, and suddenly this guy changed. He, wow. uh, he told me he started going Thank to God. church. Praise you God. know, uh, uh, and th th that's something that I think that it's not really when you become the, um, the IT guy, no, when no, you become no, the, no, you no, know, no, no, no. that you can be an influencer. And also mm. in my present, even though now, even though I'm talking more professional, mm. you know, I don't have to be the head of project delivery mm -hmm. to become to influence. an influencer. But with my talent, because I sing, and mm -hmm. when we come for our away day, mm -hmm. they said, Olu, sing for sing us. Sing for us. And I sing gospel song for them. So Hallelujah. in a way, that's yeah, a bit of influence that Hallelujah. I do. We're, we're, everything, so now let's look at that Luke scripture. Did he gave them talents. He didn't give them position. Praise the Lord. You know, it's because we, we uh, it's Easter Sunday. That, that's why we're not spending 45 minutes. He gave them talents, not position. Praise the Lord. So the talent that you have, whether it is weaving of hair, whether it is saloon, whether it is cleaning, whatever you do, do it so well that you are the go-to person. Even if you are, you know, it's your first year, especially, you know, our young graduates, your first year in the, in the role, in the office, praise the name of the Lord. Do your work so well that you are the go-to person. Hallelujah. And you will influence people. People will make you a reference point. You see, even when you say, look, can you not clean the floor the way this other person cleans it? You have influenced someone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My time is genuinely up uh, by over four minutes because we have so many things to do. Please, if you could bear with me, Pastor Inka will quickly wrap up. Uh, everyone has influence. Praise the Lord. Amen. God expects us to be good stewards of that influence for his kingdom's sake. Everyone has what? 
influence. Mother, father, brother, sister, you know, wherever we may be, we all have influence. The Lord wants us to use that influence for his kingdom's sake. May God expand his word to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. The name of the Lord. All right. So the roundup has been made easy, and I just want to dwell on the book of Matthew, chapter 25, that we read. And um, so, in how we've said, Mr. Tina was alluding to the fact that do I have to have a position? How many of us here uh, have a family member that doesn't know Christ? Show of hand. Okay. A member of your family that does not know Christ, they have not. It can be part of your immediate family or extended family. Okay. Yeah. So you have one. Um, first thing is that every one of us have something that is called a sphere of influence. If you are a father, you have a wife, God helping you, children, you exact influence over those groups. If you came from a family, you have brothers, you have sisters that you exert some sort of influence over. Okay, thank God. And this day and age, how many of us have a family WhatsApp group? Okay, if you don't have one, you need to get one. Get all your family members on the WhatsApp group. In my own family, we have a WhatsApp group. I don't mean my family, my extended family. Have a WhatsApp group. And we have another WhatsApp group that is only for the Christians among us. And I'll tell you why. Um, when things are discussed on the main one, uh, that is not, uh, we strategize how we are going to counter it. And that's how we've been doing it. <laughs> because, you know, we have, I was originally a Jehovah Witness. So, you know, to, discuss with the Jehovah Witness, you must be really harmed. We still have a member of the family that's a Jehovah Witness. Every one of us have people that you can exact influence over. And that was the issue with that man. He said, rather than look at the one talent that he was given, he was complaining about the, he said, look, you only gave me one. And the man said, the one that I gave you, what did you do with it? What did you do with the one that I gave you? We are all going to be asked of what did we do with the influence that God has given us? Over family members, over siblings, what did we do? I pray when we are given accounts, we will not be found blameworthy in Jesus' name. Please, children, let's settle down um, quietly. Praise the name of the Lord. But I think it starts with the idea. So many of us tend to look at the grass is greener on the other side. Um, but whatever you have uh, is sufficient for the task that God has given you. But peradventure, you think you need more. Bible talks about Exodus chapter 31, verse 2, that God is the one that fills people with spirit. And he filled that man called Huri, Exodus 31, 3. And he says, I have filled them with the spirit of God in wisdom, in ability, in understanding, and intelligence, in the knowledge, and in all kind of craftsmanship, to devise skillful works, to work in gold, to work in silver, to work in bronze, to work, to cut stones, to carve woods, and in all manner of work, craftsmanship. So in our day and age, if you are looking at Uri, Uri will be a gold, gold smith, a silver smith, uh, uh, a carpenter, a, a, a chef, he had all the skills, as it were. Uh, it is it started by the Spirit of God being upon him. I think that's probably where we take a prayer, that God, I don't know what it is that you desire, but there is a God in heaven that can put his Spirit upon man, that is enabled you to know, talk about being skillful. I want us to pray, to prayer. That Lord, when I'm given accounts with the talent that you have given me, given me, I will give it with joy. That also, that Lord, I'm asking for your spirit, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of um, ability, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of intelligence, the spirit of knowledge. 
to be able to influence my generation for you. Please, Lord, release unto me your spirit in its fullness. Thank you, Father, Lord, for it is in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. It's time to take our offering, as I call Brother Benga to take our offering. Offering. No, no, no. <coughs> Praise the Lord. <coughs> okay, it's it's offering time. Um, okay. Yeah, so we can see the bank details, you know. I just want us to, I just want to share from Matthew chapter 19. Um, sorry, can you let me show? 19 from verse 21. Matthew 19, 21 to 26, I believe. So let me just read. I'm just, you know, sharing the word even as we you know, prepare our, you know, our offering, our tithe, and, you know, and our givings. <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Matthew chapter 19, verse 21, it says, um, Jesus said to him, if you want to be prophet, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. You know, someone, you know, came to Jesus and was asking, you know, what can he do, you know, to enter uh, the kingdom of God and even to be perfect. Then um, verse 22, but when the young man heard that, saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possession. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, uh, the message says, <clears throat> I'm sorry, um, if you want, um, that's uh, from 21. If you want to give it all you've got, Jesus replied, go sell your possessions, give everything to the poor, all your weights which then be in heaven. Then come, come follow me. Then uh, verse 22, that was the last thing the young man expected to hear. And so, crestfallen, he walked away. He was holding on tight to a lot of things, and he could not be able to let go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, the disciples... They were, you know, dumb father. They say, "Wow!" Because Jesus Christ said, "It is richer for uh, it is easier for a rich man, you know, to." Uh, you know, he said, he said, "It is hard for a rich man to to enter the, the kingdom of God, isn't it?" Um, then the disciples were now asking, "I mean, how possible it is?" He says, uh, "For we God, that verse twenty-six." But Jesus said, "Look at them and said to them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are." possible hallelujah you know i just want to you know encourage us uh, this morning that we should give our whole life you know once again you know on the um to um, to god our spirit soul and body let's put it in the basket box you know um let's you know our life our money everything you know that we have then that way it's easy for us it's easier for us that there's nothing that, that we, we cannot let go if we can give our life you know you know our money inclusive hallelujah Amen. you know uh, I, I know i can imagine um you know, I think uh, I've had you know, something like that before when I was in Nigeria, when uh, some Amorabas came to some people and said, your money or, or your life. <laughs> your money or your life. So what, you know, will you choose your money or, you know, or your life? Life, okay, hallelujah. <laughs> She's asking me which one will I choose. <laughs> hallelujah, praise the Lord. So if we can give our life to Christ, there's nothing that we cannot, you know, give, put in the offering, you know, basket. And that's the best thing that can, you know, happen to us, hallelujah. So I just, you know, want those, you know, that, that we should give our life once again, even today, to the Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise Amen. Oh, okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, you know, once again today. Thank you, thank God, because Jesus Christ is alive. We we'll give our spirit, soul, and body once again to you. Our money, everything that we have, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, you know, for accepting and even receiving all about us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we shall lack nothing, and in your kingdom, you know, we shall not be found wanting Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Please shall we rise as we give our offering.
It's your God. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the
praise the name of the Lord. Okay. So you have noticed that the children are milling around and are not in their class. We are in for a good day. Um, okay. So they're going to go ahead with a present series of presentation. The first is a Bible reading. Uh, can I call on Emmanuel Akim to come and take the Bible reading? Good morning, church. Um, I'm going to read um, Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 6. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men wandering about um, close that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright to the women, bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look from the, for the, meaning the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Remember how <laughs> he remember how he had, he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. Christ the Lord is risen. Christ the Lord is risen today. Yeah. 
praise the name of the Lord. We give glory to the Lord. Christ the Lord is risen. Praise be to God on high. Uh, we are blessed to have our children in our midst. Uh, we have the children's uh, church presentation. Let's, let's make them. Keep clapping on. Good morning, church. We, we, the children, have a presentation. We hope you are blessed as you listen. To, to, to start off, off, some of our children will be sharing with us what they have been learning in their quiet time. As you know so far, we, we, we have read the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and now in John. Now, these, of course, include the gospel gospels that teaches us children about the life of Jesus, his love for us, and how he has redeemed us by his blood that he shed for us on the cross of Calvary. Equally, equally, most importantly, we ought to live our lives in a way that pleases him. May you be blessed as you listen. Good morning, church. Happy Easter. So what I learned was is in John, John 6, 32 to 33. And I learned that the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven to give life to the world. And Jesus is that bread that comes down from heaven to give life to us all. Good day, church. I'm here to present what I've been learning in my quiet time. The children department have been learning, have been studying some scriptures, and this particular scriptures I studied in my quiet time, and it's from John chapter ten verse nine, and it says, "I am the I am the door. If any man enters, they shall be saved." I learned that we should we should come to Jesus, and we shall be saved. The next scripture is taken from. John chapter 12, verse 36, and it says, Ye are the light, believe in the light that we may be the children of light. I learned that we should believe in Jesus and he shall bring light to our life and that every darkness shall disappear. Thank you. Good morning, church. Today I'll be doing a presentation of what I've been doing during my quiet time this week. This week I have read John 13 to John 19. In John 13, it talks about how Jesus had the Passover meal with his disciples and were washing his disciples' feet. From this, I learned that I can help everyone older than me and younger than me. In John 14, it was talking about how Jesus was explaining how he was going to go to heaven and where his disciples could find him. The verse that really stood out to me was verse 6, and it was saying, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to, to the Father except through me. From this, I learned that Jesus is our salvation and our deliverer. In John 15, it was talking about how we are the vine and Jesus is the branches. The in I learned that I learned that steam. It was talking about it was talking about how how he Jesus was going to send the Holy Spirit down to be our comforter. I learned that when Jesus comes back, we will rejoice and nobody will take away our joy from us. Yeah. In John 17, it was talking about how Jesus went up the mountain to pray. From that, I learned that as a child of God, I should always pray no matter the situation. In John 18, it was talking about how Judas portrayed Jesus and how Jesus was arrested. From that, I learned that they release a criminal instead of the innocent Jesus Christ, even though he was a good man. In John 19, it was talking about 
how Jesus was buried and how he was crucified on the cross. From this, I learnt that Jesus died for our sins. <laughs> Morning, church. My name is Ayomide, and I ha and I will be talking to you about one of the verses I about one of the scriptures I have been doing in my quiet time. It is John eleven forty one to forty three and forty to forty four, and it says, um, "So they rolled away the stone, and Jesus said to them, um, do not fear." And so they rolled up, so Jesus, and it talked about the death of Lazarus. I don't remember much of it, but I can tell you what I learned from it. Um, what I learned, what I, what I learned from it was, what I learned from, what I learned from it is that even if we are dead in, for 100 years, God can still, even if we are dead in sin for 100 years, God can still save us, no matter what, even, even if our sins are as red as crimson. Now we also want to go into a short session of our quiz. We want to test, you. We want to test your Bible knowledge. We've we've specially prepared some questions for you. you. You'll see you'll see them up on the board on on my right. But but before that, we're going to be splitting you into group. To my very left is group A. In the middle is group B, and to my right is group C. And the back is group D. It, Including the technical team upstairs and downstairs and the ushers. <laughs> Group A, this is your question. What is the name of the disciple that betrayed Jesus? Judas. Oh, Judas. Which Judas? Judas Iscariot. Well done. <laughs> This is your question. How um, how much did Jesus did betray Jesus for? C correct. <laughs> Group C, this is your question. Hi. Hi. Which disciple denied that he knew Jesus? Any This is um, group group B D. This is your question. How many times did the disciple deny Jesus? Three times. It's not three times. Group D. Three times. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Group A, this is your next question. What happened when a, when a soldier pierced, he pierced the, bo the body of Jesus after his death? Yes. Correct. According to the script, to scripture, what was the first person to see Jesus after his r resurrection? Group B, that's your question. B, group B, that's your question. Who said it? Anyone? Good on. Group C, this is your... Group C, this is your question. Who was released in the people instead of Jesus? To the people instead of Jesus? Is it 
Group D, this is your question. A, what did the people shout when Pilate wanted to release Jesus? Correct. <laughs> To go, to go into the world and make disciples of all... No. Yeah. This is a bonus question. No, this is a bonus question. This is a bonus question. What, what did Jesus say about the Great Commission? Is it everyone? Who wants to... Okay. Someone? Yes? No, no, no. They have to quote it. You have to quote it correctly. Yes. If you don't quote it correctly, then... No point, no. Oh. <laughs> Anyone? 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 Uh, Anyone? Want a bonus? Anyone? What, what did Jesus say about the Great Commission? Anyone want to say it? Anyone? And you had to pronounce it correctly. Huh? Um, therefore, go and baptize. No, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Correct! <laughs> Matthew 28, verse 19. All right, can we just give our children a round of applause again, real quick? So God bless our children. Can we just take just 30 seconds to encourage you, please? You send the children come out to talk about what they've been learning in their quiet time. God has helped us read the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, and we're now in John. Please, parents, help our children to remind them. It's very important. Okay, God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. As we go on, let's take the second Bible reading. Can I ask um, Brasson de Yolande to take the second Bible reading? As the teenagers get ready for their presentation. Good morning, church. Our second Bible reading is from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, from verse 12 to 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to 22. I'm reading from New King James Version. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we have found false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we have all men the most pitiable. But now, Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Verse 21, for since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. Verse 22, the last verse. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Please welcome the Teens Choir for the administration.
my soul.